70 miles west of the Nile in the Sahara Desert, it's so hot and dry what little rain that falls evaporates before it hits the ground. Here, in this desolate landscape, lived a tribe of nomads who just may have been the ancestors of the pharaohs. Fred Wendorf of Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, heads an international team of archaeologists who've been scouring the desert looking for signs of human occupation. In 1974, they located an ancient settlement on the rim of a shallow basin they call Napta Playa. The Sahara was not always parched and arid. Radiocarbon dating reveals that at about 8,000 BC, tropical Africa's summer monsoon shifted northward, increasing the rainfall on the desert and allowing seasonal lakes to form. One such lake was Napta Playa. Here, surrounded by stretches of grassland to feed their livestock, people could take shelter from the heat and the vagaries of the desert. But the rain was unpredictable. Without it, the lake dried up. Three days without water meant the difference between life and death. With survival hanging in the balance, a remarkable thing happened. Co-leader of the expedition, Rumold Schild of the Polish Academy of Sciences, has discovered a tiny circle of stones, a Stonehenge in miniature, but 2,000 years older. He thinks it was used to predict the coming of the rainy season. Well, this humble pile of rocks that you see here is actually one of the oldest calendars ever found. This one consisted of a stone ring and two stone upright stone alignments that I call gates. You can see them here and there. And one of the alignments points to the north, exactly. The other one, though, that you can see in this, going in this direction, points to the position of the sun on the 21st of June. That is the beginning of summer. The beginning of the rain season in this belt of Africa. The discovery of this calendar circle only hinted at what was to come. Nearby, several unusual stones were also found, arranged in circles, marking the location of deep pits. The stones, some weighing over one and a half tons, didn't come from Napta Playa. They'd been dragged here from a distant quarry. For the desert dwellers to transport large stones and erect them required an incredible amount of effort and organization. The question is, why? Fred Wendorf thinks they may mark the graves of important people or honor their spirits. Perhaps someone powerful enough to intercede with the gods and bring rain. 
One of the most imposing objects was found in this pit, perhaps the final resting place of a ruler or a chieftain. At first it looked like an ordinary boulder, but when Wendorf examined it more closely, it turned out to be a primitive sculpture. We found this very large and carefully shaped stone down in this hole, about a meter above the uh, large bedrock outcrop here that's shaped like a mushroom. You can see how carefully it's worked and smoothed on the surfaces, sharp edge, and you can see how they were able to control the uh, length of the piece by uh, making grooves in this face here, which you can see, and then by using a wedge they were able to uh, strike off the flakes at exactly the points that they wanted to. This is altogether a very impressive piece of, of uh, stonework and it may well mark the beginning of Egyptian fascination with working in large stones. It is also an important marker of social rank because the ability to control large numbers of men that were needed to shape this stone, to bring it into position, to shape the bedrock below, uh, required that there would be numerous people for a considerable period of time to accomplish all of this. And this indicates that this individual had a higher rank than the others. Here, 7,000 years ago, the first crude monuments in Egypt rose from the desert to honor a fallen king and bring order out of chaos. But for the people of Naptaplaya, the sands of time were running out. Around 5000 BC, the summer monsoon began to shift again, this time south. The rains eventually stopped and oases like Naptaplaya permanently dried up. Forced to abandon the desert, the settlers headed due east, towards the Nile. 